Hello. Imago Dei, Latin for in the image of God. We are created as creators. Everyone has been created with a specific passion or interest for a unique purpose by God to fulfill our calling in life. And this purpose is what the new American dream is based on. No longer is it about acquiring value through the means of vacation home and a two-story house and three shiny cars, but rather bringing value through living with purpose. One of the remarkable things about this event and humans in general is our incredible God-given diversity and creativity. Well, that's what we do in everyday life. We create, we innovate from finding engaging alternative activities for our kids instead of zoning out in front of the TV to how we originate our own artistic expressions. We even create new recipes to promote health for our families. Using creativity and innovation like this makes all the difference in our quality of life, does it not? One of the core elements of human existence throughout history that has propelled the advancement of our societies has been our drive and our desire for innovation and invention. But when we think of inventors, we think of names like Edison and the Wright brothers, and we have a common misperception that inventors are a select few with a particular stroke of genius. If we knew the true story behind most inventors though, we'd find that that actually isn't true. What sets a successful inventor apart is something that is available to all of us and it's found just in their state of mind. See, inventors choose to see the world through a mind that is free to imagine without limitations. They've learned to recognize and understand the issues and the opportunities at hand. And they've learned the practical steps of bringing an idea all the way through to fruition. You see, inventing is an art. It's a skill much like painting. It's a skill that can be taught and inventing is a skill that can be learned. I believe everyone has the ability to innovate and invent. The creativity of innovation stems from doing your passion. That's how we say we appreciate the opportunity to be alive, to fulfill our passion. Well, I'd like to share with you my experience and why I believe this is true. In the third grade, I started my first inventor's logbook. I was very passionate about creating as a kid. I recall spending countless hours in the garage taking apart things that I probably wasn't supposed to have and making something new out of them. Here's a couple of excerpts from my inventor's logbook from the third grade. The automatic toothpaste dispenser, just short of brilliant. The electric shower curtain, maybe not yet patented. <laughs> the deodorizing litter box, why not? And this became my first commercial product that I launched in the fourth grade. It was a glove with sandpaper on it. I called it the handy sander. And I actually did a limited production run and sold them to my neighbors. <laughs> Well, I was very fortunate. <laughs> I, I was very fortunate to know my purpose and calling in life at a young age, which was to change the world through innovation. I found a particular interest in clinical prosthetics as a profession. I knew I wanted to go into a field that involved inventing and design and working with people. And I found prosthetics to be a field where through innovation and invention, I could give life back to amputees. Coming into the field, I realized that there was an enormous gap between the state-of-the-art prosthetics and the human body. So there's a lot of room for innovation. I had a few particular patients that helped me understand this more clearly. This gentleman traveled to our clinical facility as a last resort for walking again. He had been on crutches for 17 years since his hip disarticulation level amputation because he had been unable to be fit with and use conventional prosthetic designs. I knew that if I was to offer this man the ability to walk again, I would have to understand the root issues of why conventional prosthetics did not work for him. And I would have to create an entirely new approach to fitting this challenging level of amputation. And by the next morning, I had created a new design, a new idea, a new concept for fitting this challenging level of amputation. I handed this prototype to him he put it on, stood there for a moment, threw his crutches down, and he took off walking for the first time in 17 years. It was, 
It was a remarkable moment for me, but more importantly for him. I went on to have a number of other experiences that were equally as powerful, from enabling patients to dance again for the first time, enabling patients who had undergone bilateral upper extremity amputations, having lost both arms, to be able to hold their wife's hand again for the first time, even giving one gentleman the ability to walk his daughter down the aisle for an upcoming wedding after having recently lost both legs. Well, all of this was possible because of innovation and invention. And I realized through these experiences that I had a larger opportunity. In fact, it was an opportunity and a responsibility for me to focus more of my career on developing new technologies, not just for my patients, but technologies that would go on to change the field and the lives of thousands of others, most of which I knew I would never even meet. Well, starting out, I had no background or formal training in inventing or business development. In fact, starting out, I didn't even have the funding or the resources to enable me to pursue my invention ideas. So I had to get very creative. And I found that there were countless opportunities around me which I could leverage to enable me to pursue my designs. I found people who knew what I needed to know, to ask questions to. I found mentors to teach me how to write grant proposals, how to write patent applications, how to even start a business. Starting out, I lacked the very fundamental skill set needed to accomplish what I set out to pursue. And within just a couple of years through radical providential favor and connections and diligent work, I was able to grow a couple of napkin sketch invention ideas into one of the largest prosthetic research and development companies in the nation. Within just a couple of years, I'd been awarded nearly $2 million in grant funds, half a million dollars in tax incentives, and had gained international press and recognition on some of my designs. Today, I have a number of issued patents, several more pending patent applications, and several successful businesses in various fields based off of my inventions. All of this is possible because, like other inventors, I chose to see the world through a mind it was free to imagine without limitations. And this enabled me to recognize and understand the issues and the opportunities at hand. And I learned the practical steps of bringing an idea all the way through to fruition. I believe everyone has the same opportunity to innovate and invent in regard to their passion. Did you realize that within just the next 10 years, most of the products that we use today will have been reinvented? Consider product evolution. Products that we used 10 years ago are not the same ones we use today. And what we will use 10 years in the future will be different yet again. Within just the next 10 years, independent inventors will submit nearly three quarters of a million patent applications, not from companies or corporations, but from independent inventors like you and I. So can we come up with just one good idea that can have an impact on our world? Absolutely. What are you passionate about? Well, in the beginning of the 20th century, the Wright brothers were very passionate about flying machines. At the time, creating a flying machine was something that man had been pursuing for hundreds, if not thousands of years. And because of other enabling technologies of the day, it was evident that the possibility of powered flight was eminent. There were many people chasing this dream of being the first man in history to fly. There are teams of experts and scientists at top universities and research labs who are setting out to accomplish this far-reaching goal. So how did two guys with no college education who ran a bicycle shop to fund their pursuit of a flying machine become the ones to set this world-changing milestone in human history? How'd they do that? Well, it wasn't that they developed better wing designs than their competition. In fact, they largely borrowed wing designs of other scientists of their day. It wasn't that they figured out the right order for the elevator and the rudder. In fact, they were wrong compared to our conventional standards. Yet their minds were free and open to recognize and understand the issue. The issue wasn't that they needed to create larger engines to propel the plane into flight as some of the other researchers were pursuing. Instead, it took two bicycle repairmen to figure out the issue and find a technical solution for what that real issue was, which was that they needed better controls. And that is what enabled them on December 17th, 1903, to be the first men in history to have a successful con uh, powered controlled human flight. Do you believe that you have the ability to change the world 
in regard to your passions. Well, we're all passionate about different things. What you're passionate about does not have to result in a patentable invention. Business models that we've used up through today will not be the same ones that continue in the future. They evolve and they change just the same as product evolution does. So create a new business model that can fulfill a need in our city or our field or for our customer base. Find new ways of inspiring students to learn. Create a new device that can change how people live. Find new ways of teaching our children strong moral values. There are countless ways of using our gifts, our time, our careers, and our ideas to affect our world and our communities. Well, I, uh, there is no person represented here today that does not have the capacity to use innovation to directly impact our lives and the lives of those around us. I have a good friend of mine named Corey, and Corey has learned a very innovative business model. In fact, it's a very innovative approach to buying real estate. Corey finds a distressed property. He buys that property subject to the current owner's existing financing. He then resells that property to a new owner based on that same financing, and he becomes a note holder. He doesn't deal with any banks. He has no conventional financing on the property and has no liability in the transaction. It's a very innovative model. Well, Corey was telling me recently that he realized that his brother did not yet own a home and he felt his brother needed to have an opportunity to buy a home. In fact, his brother couldn't even qualify for conventional financing. So he found a distressed property, bought it subject to the current owner's existing financing, resold that property to his brother based on that same financing and he became the note holder. He now makes about $500 a month on the transaction and enabled his brother to own a home. Very creative solution. But get this, Corey's brother is three. Corey is eight. The unique advantage that Corey has is that he has a dad who's taken time to teach his son his profession, something our culture has long since forgotten, but that's been done for thousands of years. Now, Corey's dad is a brilliant real estate investor and has given Corey guidance and coaching in each of these transactions. But Corey now owns several properties free and clear and makes really good money. <laughs> He has an understanding of real estate as an eight-year-old better than most real estate agents. But Corey's real love isn't real estate. It's inventing. Corey told me recently, he said, Jay, you know, I want to be an inventor when I grow up. Well, Corey doesn't have to wait. He already is one. I've had a chance to help mentor Corey in his inventing. I now get to teach a number of people this process of how to come up with an idea, how to think like an inventor, and those practical steps of seeing their idea all the way through to fruition. I said that my purpose and calling in life was to change the world through innovation, but I realized that I could have an exponentially greater impact on the world through teaching others how to innovate. My hope and expectation is that through enabling my students, they go on to have a greater impact on the world than I. So I encourage Corey to not just try to think up a new patentable invention, but to use his knowledge base and understanding of real estate and find a way to meet a need in his city or community. So Corey's actively working on that. You see, Corey has something that many of us have been conditioned out of. He's still asking the question, why? Well, what does every eight-year-old ask? Why? His mind is still free to imagine without limitations. All too often for us, the answers that we have been taught when asking the why questions have resulted in ingraining into us a just because this is the way it's done mentality. Do we ask why as adults or do we follow the same methodology as conventional thinking because that's just the way we're supposed to do it? If we don't ask why or why not or what if, our creativity and innovation is stifled. Believe that you have the ability to accomplish goals and create change that no one else around you will ever come up with. I learned this lesson through hands-on experience. <laughs> what first got me launched down the path as a career inventor was I simply had an idea. Based on my clinical understanding in prosthetics, I had an idea for developing an advanced autonomous robotic prosthetic device. And I had no background or experience in de designing advanced autonomous robotics. In fact, just a couple years earlier, I was forced to drop a computer programming class in college because I wasn't even able to pass it. But I had an idea. 
And I believed that if I could just get this concept developed by engineers, it would go on to change the world and the lives of thousands of amputees. So using the resources around me, I found someone to help teach me how to write grant proposals. And the first grant proposal I submitted, I was awarded nearly $300,000 to develop this concept. So I went out and I hired an established credentialed engineering firm to partner with, it, with me on this development effort. This was PhD level scientists, control system ex experts, mechanical engineers, electrical engineers, software engineers, the brightest minds I could find. They gave me more reasons why it was not possible to develop my concept than they gave me ways of accomplishing it. So I fired them all. <laughs> my solution? was I went out and I hired a group of college interns. Some, some of these college kids ended up graduating and moving on and the team morphed and grew a bit over the next couple of years, but no one on my team had any experience in designing robotic prosthetics. They had no preconceived notions on why this design would not be possible. I led this team by teaching them only what I needed them to know, to understand the needs of my patients and why this design was relevant. I cast a vision for them that what we were setting out to accomplish would forever change life for people with limb loss. They became intrinsically motivated. They believed in why they were doing their work. They were all underpaid. We all worked long hours and we were all underqualified by any conventional standards. In fact, at the time, there was a number of other teams around the nation setting out to accomplish similar goals. There were teams of experts and scientists at top universities and research labs who had incredible amounts of funding, had the brightest minds in the field working on this. Yet my team of young emerging engineers became the first to develop an autonomous robotic prosthetic of its type. A couple years ago for Christmas, I received a crisp $100 bill. But along with this gift, I was given a task to find somebody else's life to change with that hundred dollars. See, the philosophy behind this gift was that we can use our resources, whatever type that may be, to affect the lives of those around us. As innovators, do we not have that same opportunity? Whether we develop new technologies, ways of using technology, ways of doing business, create new forms of economic change, or use our endeavors to fund other such changes, innovation has the potential to result in change lives. Just as my $100 bill will go a long way to affect someone's life, the innovations represented amongst those in this room through your lives will go a long way to affect our world around us. So let our innovation go there. Consider our opportunity and responsibility to let innovation affect the lives of those around us and those whose lives touch our pursuits. Thank you.